Hey guys, welcome to Whiteboard Thursday. If you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe as I have new videos every week where I solve coding problems on a whiteboard in a real interview setting. And this week's problem is that if you're given an array, how do you find the K most frequently occurring elements in it? So let's see how we solve it. So for this problem, I, th I think it'll be easier if you start out with an example. Uh -huh. So let's say I have an input of an array which can look like one, six, two, one, six, one. Okay. And in this case, the output, let's say the K is two. Mm -hmm. So in this case, the output will be one and it can be one and it'll be one and six, right? Correct. So I think in order for me to approach this problem, the first thing I will need is somewhere to store the frequencies for each of the elements, right? Let's say I have a hash map for it. So frequency, let's say I initialize a hash map and I'm iterating through the array and I'm just populating all of the frequencies. Mm -hmm. So the way it look is I'll have one and the frequency for one is three, right? I'll have six, frequency of six is two, and I'll mm -hmm. have two, and the frequency of that is one, right? Yep. Now, once I have this, mm -hmm. I will, it'll help me if I have the frequencies themselves kind of sorted. So if I had three, four uh, elements with the same frequency, I would want them together, yep. right? Because I'm not differentiating between them. So just for the sake of this example, you know, let me, let me, um, let me have one more six here mm -hmm. so that it'll be easier for me to illustrate. Yeah. So how this will work is, let's say I call this a bucket because it'll be, it'll be a bucket um, of all of the elements with a certain frequency. Okay. And let's say the bucket looks something like this. It's an array. Mm -hmm. And at each index, mm -hmm. um, it will have frequencies corresponding to that particular index. Mm -hmm. Yeah? So let's say the size of this array let's say the size of this array is whatever the length of this array is plus one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So its last index would be what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The last index itself will be seven. And we totally ignore the index zero because we don't care about elements uh, with frequency zero, right? Because there'll be like infinite amount of elements. Yeah. So let's say for um, zero, one, two, three, four, and so on, uh, for the frequency two, I'm right here. And I have one and six in that bucket, right? Or sorry, not for frequency two, for frequency three, I'm right here, right? Yeah. I have one and six in that bucket. On the other hand, for frequency one, mm -hmm. I'm here and I have two in that bucket. Okay. So if I have a bucket like this, the maximum length of this bucket will need to be basically the length of the input itself, mm -hmm. right? Um, so I can initialize this from the start mm -hmm. as a length of the input plus one, mm -hmm. uh, like we discussed, and I can iterate from the end upwards. Mm -hmm. Because if I'm looking for the, the two most frequently uh, occurring elements, then I will I will encounter them uh, from from the end upwards. So in this case, I will I will go this way, and all of these will be null. You know, four, five, six, seven. They'll all be null, and then I encounter the bucket for frequency three. I have two elements in there. Mm -hmm. I'll push those to my results, mm -hmm. and I'm done because k is two. If k was three, then I would go further, and I'll push two in that as well, okay. right? So. Um, I think if we understand the logic, let me move on to the function. Yeah, sure. How that's going to work. So let me leave this here. And initialize function. Let me call it frequency. Frequency k. 
and let's say it takes in an array and a number k, yeah? Yeah. The first thing I'll do is I'll need to iterate to the input array. So I'll say array dot for, for each. Mm -hmm. um, let's say it takes a function and we have the value and the index, right? And the only thing I'm doing is populating the hash map and initializing the bucket mm -hmm. with, uh, with an array of nodes. So let me, let me make sure that I initialize the hash map outside of this uh, scope. So let me call that frequency, F-R-E-Q. Let me call the bucket a bucket. Mm -hmm. And bucket is a, an, an array and frequency is a hash map. It's, it's kind of small, but basically you know that frequency is initialized as in hash map and bucket is initialized as an array. Now, what I will do is I will say frequency um, if, if the key exists for the element. So if frequency uh, value exists. Mm -hmm. If that's the case, then I'll say um, frequency value equals frequency value plus one. Yeah? Yeah. On the other hand, if it doesn't exist, so I'll say else frequency value equals one, right? Because it's the first time we encountered it. At the same time, I want to um, I want to put something in the bucket, mm -hmm. uh, which is null right now. So bucket bucket uh, whatever the index is, whatever the index is right now, plus one because we don't care about zeroth index. Yeah. So i plus one equals null. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. So I close this. And um, at this point, I will have, I'll have this hash map and a bucket full of nodes. Yeah. So now what I want to do is I want to populate this bucket, yeah. right? So let me iterate through all of the keys in this hash map mm -hmm. and therefore populate the bucket. So I'll say um, frequency dot for each. function. So this will have a function as well. Let's say it takes in um, a key. Actually, let's say pseudocode. So I have frequency.keys. Let's say we are trading over the keys, right? Uh -huh. Frequency.keys dot for each. And um, I have the key as a parameter in my function. Now what I would need to do is for each key, what exactly is a key? Key is the element itself, right? Yep. So I'll need to go to the value of that key mm -hmm. and push in this element, right? Over here, I'll need to go to the value of the key and push in this element yep. or index, uh, which is the value of the key. So um, let's see, how would we do it? I'll say if because initially it's null, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So let me let me just init initialize um, frequency um, f equals um, frequency key. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a value, mm -hmm. and I'll say if bucket. F, if it does not exist, yeah. if it doesn't exist, then you say bucket F equals, initialize the array, inside of the array, you put in where the value was, right? If it does exist, you say else bucket F which will give us the array mm -hmm. dot push 
the key, right? Correct. Perfect. So now at the end of this, I'll have this bucket. Yeah. Now what I want to do is I want to iterate from the end of this bucket mm -hmm. and, um, and populate my results array. Let's say I have uh, results initialized in the global scope as well. So I'll say um, bucket, let me write bucket properly, B-U-C-K-E-T, bucket dot for each. Actually, I don't want bucket dot for each. I want to iterate from the end, right? So let me say, um, let me say I have a for loop mm -hmm. for let i equals bucket dot length mm -hmm. minus one. Yeah. I is greater than zero. I don't care about zeroth index and i minus minus, right? Yeah. What I want to do is I want to push things in the results array to the point where the results array is um, is of the length of k, yeah. right? So what I'll do is um, if, so over here actually, mm -hmm. i is greater than zero, I'll also have a condition that says results dot length mm -hmm. is less than k. Right? So if we have enough results, we stop. Now I have an if statement that says if, um, if bucket, if bucket i is not equal to null. Yeah? Mm -hmm. This is the case, then let's say I have a helper method that just merges whatever is um, in this particular bucket into our results array. Let's assume that. Um, so I'll say, um, let me say merge my results um, with, or let me say results.merge, and it'll be better. Results dot merge um, bucket i right yeah okay. mm -hmm. now what I want to do at the end now this for loop will go on right and we'll keep on pushing at the end maybe it's a case that we have more elements and results just because uh, for example if you we were looking at k equals three right and if this particular bucket has like 10 elements yeah. it'll push all of those 10 elements then i just want to output the first k elements from the results so i'll say return k you know whatever the first k elements are in the results array mm -hmm. those are the ones that you return the helper methods in all programming languages to to do to do it um but basically, this would then yield us the output of 1 and 6. I see. And the time complexity of this would be, um, would be linear. Mm -hmm. And the space complexity would be linear as well. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, make sure you hit like and subscribe. And also share it with your friends. And if you're looking for more advanced coding problems that you can give it a try yourself, then check out the description box below for more details and i'll see you next week